here's my, here's my demand curve. And here's the price of good one. P1 naught, X1 naught. Here's X1, here's P1. So that's the price of good one. This is X1 of P1, P2 naught, up to Pn naught, M naught. Right? So that's my Marshallian demand curve corresponding to some initial set of prices, initial income, and I'm letting the price of good one vary. That traces out my Marshallian demand curve. That's my initial point. And if I'm just going to change the price of good one. So when the price of good one goes down, how much of an increase in real income do I get? How much would my price index as my real income went up? Well, my price index actually corresponds to measuring my increase in real income by that area there. It says, well, good one got cheaper. And when good one got cheaper, how much income did I gain? Well, I got a dollar cheaper, and I'm buying 10 units. I gained 10 bucks. <coughs> if I use the period one quantity to measure my gain, I'm going to tend to understate my gain from the fall in price. Right? Why? Why does it tend to understate my gain? It doesn't, it doesn't, it says that's how much you'd gain if you couldn't substitute at all. It, it misses the substitution. What if I measured my gain not using my initial quantity, but I measured my gain using my new quantity? When the only thing changed was the price of good one. Well, then I would measure it by this big box. Then I would measure it by that big box, right? Because I would be using the new quantity, 12 units times the change in price. The price went from $20 to $19. My consumption went from 10 units to 12 units. How much did I gain? Well, you gain more than 10 and gain less than 12. That's the answer. 12 is too big, 10 is too small. Right answer is somewhere between the two. All right? People understand how that works. And that's what we said. These are first order approximations. Right? This is a first order approximation. And I have two different first order approximations I could use. I could use my initial bundle or I could use my new bundle. And it's not like one is better than the other. If I use the new bundle and the price of good one went down, I'm going to tend to overstate how much I gain from the price going down because I'm going to put more weight on it. On the other hand, if I, if I use my original bundle, I'm going to tend to understate how much prices went down because I'm going to ignore the fact I can buy more. Similar way to think about it is if prices went up, that is going the reverse direction, when I use the big quantity, I'm going to overstate my loss because I'm going to ignore my ability to substitute away from it. So it really is always the same phenomenon. I'm always ignoring the ability to substitute. When prices go up, I ignore the fact that I can substitute away. When prices go down, I ignore the fact I can substitute toward. Right? That is that cost function. Remember, when we talked about the cost function, and we did that approximation for the stupid cost function, right? Stupid cost function was exactly that. It was the stupid cost function, right? It was how much you would gain or lose if you didn't change anything. So it's always going to overstate how much you lost, because it's going to say how much would you lose if you didn't make any adjustment. Right? Similarly, when we looked at the utility side, we did that quantity index. We approximated the indifference curve by the budget line. 
we said, well, that's okay locally, but that's going to tend to miss. If you're moving along the budget line, you're actually worse off. Because it's you're moving to something you could have picked before but didn't. That's the problem. Both of these first order approximations are exactly that. But actually, that's good. Because they're first order approximations, and we also know kind of which way they're off. We know they're pretty close, at least if things don't change too much. On the other hand, we also know they're either biased one way or the other, depending on which one we're looking at. So what I'm trying to tell you here is that consumer theory that we use to think about utility maximization and consumer choice is very helpful because it gives us a lot of empirical guidance as to how we can measure things. It says things like real GDP measured by you know, weighting changes in quantities by the different prices that we see. Or a price index that looks at how things change for the cost of a given bundle. It's useful even if the bundle doesn't stay constant. Nothing here assumes that the bundle doesn't change. It's still a first order approximation even when the bundle doesn't change, and when the bundle does change. 